You know what they say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Welcome guys. Before we start, I would like to remind you that my videos are for entertainment purposes. This video has some tips and tricks that I personally do, but it's no medical advice. You need to consult your doctor before you do anything. So I'm going to be sharing with you my tips and tricks for intramuscular injections. Painless ones, by the way. Also, this video is going to teach you how to do them too, but always consult your doctor, please, okay? Now, there's different areas in your body where you can um, get them done. Um, I've heard of arms, you know, right on your butt. Um, thighs, but mine were assigned to be done um, on my upper quadrant here. However, from research, um, I learned that doing them right here, just a little bit further to the outside, close to the hip, and high enough, not all the way down here, see where the, um, excuse my language, the, the crack is over here, just a little bit up. And then right here, usually the way I measure it is a little bit below my elbow. And I make a drawing there, but it just depends, okay? So one hour before I do my intramuscular injection, I put on some lecadine. It comes in different ways, but the way that I find more accessible and easier is using the lotion. Sorry that I wanted to use the mirror um, version, but it wouldn't let me. Um, so this one is called Asper Cream Lycodane Pain Relief Cream, and I put it on for at least an hour before. Try not to let it drip too much. <laughs> Then I cover it up with a large band-aid, that way it doesn't dry up. And then I go do stuff, you know, I um, go eat or whatever, or run some errands or whatever, get all my stuff ready. So, I so while I let the timer run, I start also preparing my injections. I always have two of each in case something happens, like for example, you drop it or you hit an artery or something, then you have an additional one right away that you can work with. So this is my withdrawal needle. It's pretty thick. It's actually um, 18 gauge. So the smaller the number, um, the bigger or the thicker it is. And this is the one to apply my injection with. It's the 20 it's a 22 gauge needle and it's one and a half inch. Don't don't let this scare you. It's nothing, okay? Very important you're gonna be washing your hands, okay? So now you're going to grab one of your alcohol pads and you are going to clean the top of your vial. You can disinfect it. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. You're going to open your syringe. Oops. I'm going to do it nice and slow. That way you guys have time to write down notes because I do remember when I first started learning how to do this. I had to watch so many videos, you know, because, yeah. 
some people were going like way too fast and had to be pausing all the time. See, it's got a little cap here. Take it out, put it on the side, open your um, withdrawal needle, put this on the side, then you screw it on there like this, make sure it's nice and tight, okay? Open it up like this very carefully. Then you're going to insert it in your vial carefully. You want to make sure though that there is nothing. When you first get your vial, make sure that there is no objects in there. If there's stuff in there or something that you think doesn't um, seem right, let your doctor know. You might have to get, you know. A new one. Okay, so I flip it and you pull out the um, amount of medication that you need. Sometimes I like to pull out a little bit more that way because there's a lot of bubbles that form. You know, this is these are my own tips and tricks. You know, they instruct me the certain way, but I have my own, you know ways to do and it still works the same way but remember consult your doctor first okay so then push it up see i know i still have bubbles so i know i have to pick up a little bit more and then back up see now i still um leave a tiny little bit out just in case um you flip it back down carefully and then you um carefully close it like this however if you want to have everything ready don't forget if you have a thick needle for a thicker medication don't forget you have to switch it you know and that's what i forget sometimes and then i look at the intention of oh yeah this is not the one that i'm supposed to use um, so you have to open the one that you're going to use to apply your injection. You're going to have it on the side. You're going to unscrew this one. <coughs> throw, it in, throw this in your container. And then you're going to put the wine that you need to use. Okay, see, now you have it all ready. Next thing I do is I get my handy pad out, I plug it in, and leave it on there for a little while because just a few minutes before you um, administer your injection, what I do is since I have a thick medication, I put it in here and then I roll it up just for a few minutes maybe like five minutes or so seven depends make sure it's not like burning because you don't want to burn yourself you know just warm enough so that it's fluid enough and yeah so i'm just gonna let it lay there it's not on yet but i will turn it on once the timer um has reached at least 10 minutes before due time while you're moving around and doing things, eating or whatever, grab water. Seriously, grab water and drink and enjoy it and relax because it takes a lot of relaxation. Um, the water is because your body needs to stay very hydrated so that the medicine can be very fluid it can, needs to fluctuate you know you want to make sure that you don't want to that your medicine gets stuck there you know you want to make sure it's fluid enough you want to make sure that your body's hydrating enough so that it goes to all the parts that it needs to get to okay but don't just drink during this time of the day you have to stay hydrated all day very important now
do not drink in excess because too much also can cause problems. You don't want that. Consult your doctor about that. Another important detail, you notice that I only heated up the syringe with the medication in it, not the whole vial. And that's because from all the videos from other doctors that I have seen on YouTube, they say it's not good to heat up one vial too many times. It could lose some of the most important properties in it with all the heat. Okay, we're about 10 minutes away. I turned on my heater. I'm going to roll up my syringe in it. The ink might look like it's a little runny, but I'm going to go ahead and take off my band hey? and leave my eyes back on for about 10 minutes. That would be enough. Sometimes people leave it for longer, but I don't leave it for the next 10 minutes. Make sure that it's always tension because sometimes when you walk around and you might just move around, just make sure it stays in the same spot and relax. You can even sing some songs. Good shot. Like it's your birthday. By the way, next week is my birthday. 41st. It's crazy. Alright, it's time. So you go ahead and um take off the ice pad, put it down, open up your another alcohol pad, wipe very, very, very well the area. Okay, then you grab your injection. Open it up. Um, some people um, make sure that one drop comes out first, like pushing it down. I don't do that anymore because I just feel like it, I lose medication with that. And then, you know, dart motion. No fear. Relaxed. Put it in. And start pushing down little by little, especially if it's a thick one. But mine was already worn. So it makes it a little bit more fluid. Little by little, I leave it on there for at least five seconds to make sure that none of it comes out. Five, four, three, two, one. And take it out and voila. You can use a gauze pad, but I don't want to use these ones still. <laughs> I'm going to use one of my tissues. And then you start rubbing, 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 rubbing. Really, really hard for a long time. Because if you don't want gauze, you're going to have to really rub it for a long time. You're going to go ahead. You can take a little break to put the cat back on. You're going to put it in the container. And then you get back to rubbing, 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 rubbing. So then what I do is I lay on the bed and I place the still warm heat pad on me. I leave the tissue on there. Then I put the warm heat pad here and I start rubbing. You got to leave it there for a long time. And rub, 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 massage hard, hard, hard. Now don't leave it on there for like 10 minutes straight or anything. Like after a minute or two, remove the pad so that you don't burn your skin okay so i do it like this for at least 15 minutes on and off keep going keep going keep going because you don't want any on remember that you literally froze your muscles so you want to make sure that you warm it up so that that oil can move around to everywhere and guess what that's it you did it you got this done you got this, okay? You really, really got this. So, if you enjoyed watching this video, if you think it was very useful, if you liked it, go ahead and click the thumbs up button. Go ahead and subscribe because every once in a while I like to post videos like this with useful tips, you know, um, health tips, especially lifestyle. Everything lifestyle related, everything traveling, everything food. There's a little bit of everything, but basically